What's going on guys? So today I'm going to be setting up some of my new isopods and I'm going to be showing you how to do it yourselves. If you are interested in getting yourself some isopods, make sure you check out shadowsreptiles.com. I'll have some available on there. All right, so here are the containers I'm going to be setting them up in. These are small containers. When you have a small colony of isopods and you're first going to be setting them up, like if you have about 10 or so, you want to set them up in something like this. For 10, it could be something even smaller, but um, I don't want to have to upgrade them right away. So I'm going to put this in, plus I have 25 of two of the species and I believe I have 10 of the other one, but I'm not exactly sure. I'll count them out later, but um, let's just get started and I'm gonna show you how to set them up. So here are the materials. The first thing I'm gonna be using is just some regular topsoil. So let's go ahead and put them into all of these containers. So we'll do a handful in there, a handful in there, and a handful in there. Then I like to use some of this uh, sphagnum peat moss. Holds in the humidity pretty well. So we'll throw in another handful in there and a, a handful in the other two as well. Just like that. So now what I like to do is just mix these around in here. And there is pieces of mulch and stuff inside of this dirt, which is fine. Doesn't matter because either way, we're going to be adding pieces of wood and sphagnum moss in here. Also, something else that's very important is that you have to make sure you have ventilation on your container. I forgot to mention that because I did it before uh, the video, but you want to make sure you have air holes. And you also want to make sure that the air holes are close enough to the substrate that they'll be able to climb out and get out of here. So I'll just push the substrate down on the edge so that they don't do that. All right, so the next thing I want to add is a little bit of sphagnum moss. Oh, these containers actually have that already, so some of them might need a little bit more. These are small, so this much sphagnum moss could be good, actually. I'm going to add a little bit more for each container. Not a lot. Normally I would soak this first, but theirs is already pretty humid, so I'm just gonna put it in dry and then mist it in after. There we go. And then the last thing is a little bit of leaf litter. In each one. These guys like to hide in this and they'll actually even eat these things. So you want to make sure you put it in here because they'll enjoy it a lot. All right, so there we go. I always like to add the sphagnum moss, leaf litter, and the final thing that they all enjoy is some wood inside of their enclosures. Just put that right in the middle like that. And I'm sure they're going to love it. All right, now to add all these isopods in, but before we do that, where's the spray bottle? So now I'm gonna spray these guys down. What I like to do when I spray them down is I like to spray down the sphagnum moss the most and keep that side always humid and let the other side be the drier side and let it dry out. So um, at first I just do like an entire little misting like this, just so that everything gets a little bit wet. And then I'll go in and soak the sphagnum moss a little bit more so that these guys enjoy a more humid area if they wish to. So the first ones we're gonna be adding are the zebra isopods and I should have about 25 of these guys in here. So these are the next ones that I'm gonna be adding in. These are actually some that I've been really excited about. These are Montenegro clowns. Last but not least, I have Punta Cana right here. 
So we're gonna just spray or put these guys on the stone right there. So yeah, there it is. That's how you set up your isopods. It's very simple to do and they're pretty simple to maintain. Uh, usually you feed them once a week. You can feed them a little bit more, but you wanna make sure you don't overfeed so that it doesn't get nasty in here. Uh, what I like to feed is, another thing that I forgot to mention that I like to add, but I wasn't able to get, is a piece of cuddle bone for calcium. I always like to add that in here, but the pet store for some reason didn't have it, so I'm not able to get it for these guys yet. So I'll do that in the next, or not the next video, but I'll do that once the pet store has it. And in the next isopod video, I'm gonna show you the entire setup because I'm gonna be setting up or upgrading the isopods that I do have right now into bigger containers. So I'm gonna make sure I'll show you all that. Um, but for now, this is just how to set up pretty much a new colony of isopods. So it'll be a small colony in a little container. If you're going to be setting up a bigger colony, I mean, if you have a huge colony, you shouldn't know how to set them up already. But um, you'll just pretty much do the same thing in a bigger enclosure, in a bigger tub. You want to do one side that's a little bit drier, one side for the humidity. Um, I keep this side always moist. You want to make sure you always have humidity in here. That's why I use containers like this that have plastic lids so that the water does not get out of this so i like to completely cover them up make sure that they're all nice and moist in there uh these isopods if they dry out they will die some could handle the dryness a little bit more than others so depending on what type of enclosure you're going to be doing you want to get the, the right species because isopods you could put in enclosures like this that are bioactive that have plants and dirt um i mean you don't even need the plants just if you have a dirt and sphagnum moss you put in there keep it nice and humid and they'll survive, they'll eat all the poop and all the extra food from your animals that they don't want. Um, and enclosures like this, that's a little bit more dry. Come over here so you can see them. An enclosure like this, that's a little bit more dry. You're gonna need a drier species of isopod. If not, they're not gonna be able to thrive very really good. But in here, that's a more tropical one. Most isopods will be able to be good in here. Uh, but either way, there are some that like it more humid than others. But yeah, as I was saying, you could give these guys a variety of food. I like to give them a lot of like the extra food that my animals leave over. So like the tortoises, the next day I'll take out like the stems of the romaine lettuce or like the Missouri that they left over or any fruits or vegetables that they left over. And I'll give it to the isopods or the roaches or whatever bugs that I could, you know, uh, spread it around evenly. All the bugs that I breed here for the animals, I spread all the food evenly and you just got to make sure you don't overfeed them usually you could feed them like once a week you don't need to feed them that much uh in that setup that they that i made for them they'll live as long as you provide the humidity they'll live amazingly with all the leaves and all the sphagnum moss they'll be able to eat and survive without you giving them any, any extra food um but i like to give them extra things just because you know it's usually trash that i'll just throw it out so why not just give it to them they'll enjoy it and it's actually amazing once you have a big enough colony how fast they'll devour all the all the food that you leave especially the super worms those guys i'll throw in a, a whole potato or something and then in a couple hours they'll be gone once you have a big enough colony anyways that's how you set up your isopods i hope you guys enjoyed if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comment section make sure you leave a like if you liked the video if you disliked it make sure you leave a dislike subscribe turn on post notifications and have a great day